Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we explain how to define transfer functions of dynamical systems and how to compute, or better to say generate, body plots of transfer functions. Let's start with the definition of transfer functions. As an example, let us consider a second-order system whose transfer function has this general form. W of s is equal to, in the numerator, numerator we have this polynomial, a2 multiplying s squared plus a1 multiplying s plus a0. Similarly, in the denominator we have a polynomial that looks like this, b2 multiplying s squared plus b1 multiplying s plus b0. Here, a2, a1, and a0, as well as b2, b1, and b0, are the coefficients of the corresponding polynomials. In MATLAB, we define this transfer function by defining two arrays, or better to say, two vectors. The first array, or the first vector, will, will, will store the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator, and it will look like this, a2, a1, and a0. The second vector, or the second array, will store the coefficients of the polynomial in the denominator, and it will look like b2, b1, and b0. Then, in MATLAB, we define transfer functions like this. We use the function tf, the first argument of tf is the array storing numerator, and the second argument is the array storing the denominators. And here it is. That's it. Now, let's do an example. Let us assume that Rw looks like this. 2s squared plus 10s plus 20. And in the, number, in the denominator, we have 5s squared plus 15s plus 15. Let's define this transfer function in MATLAB. First of all, let's define the array storing the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator. It is 2, 10, 20. In the denominator, we have 5, 15, 15. And finally, we define a transfer function like this. W is tf, num, then and that's it let's see our transfer function here it is we have 2s squared plus 10s plus 20 then in the denominator we have 5s squared plus 15s plus 15 how to generate a body plot to generate a body plot we will simply type body that's the name of the function and we will simply enter the name of our transfer function. And let's see the result. Here is the result. Here is our body plot. Now, usually a good practice is to add a grid over here. And let's just bring the body plot again. Here it is. Now, let's continue. Once you have the body plot, you can perform analysis, you can get the stability, you can actually compute the gain and phase margins. So let's explain how to get the gain and phase margins. If you do the right click, you will see characteristics. You can first select peak response. Then after that, you can select to this option to get minimum stability margins. And over here, you can see that phase margin is 146, delay margin, and it's given in this frequency. Is the closed loop system stable? Yes. And finally, you can click over here to get all stability margins. Okay, so far so good. However, often in practice, you would like to extract the phase and magnitude for different frequency. Let's learn how to do that. To extract the numerical values of the phase and magnitude, we need to, first of all, define the frequency of interest. In our case, the frequency of interest will start from zero. It will have the step of 0 0.01, and it will end at, for example, 
1000. Okay, now that we have a frequency of interest, we can again call the body function. We specify our transfer function as the first argument and as the second input argument, we specify our frequency vector. The body function will actually return the phase values and the magnitude values that we denote by P and M. And these values are computed for the given value of frequency. Okay, let's evaluate this and let's see the result. Add first of all semicolon here and semicolon here. So what's the result? We can see P, here it is, and we can see M, here it is. Now, let's extract the values and let's store them in corresponding vectors. To do that, let's create a for loop, iterating over P and M. We start from one and we go until the length of the frequency. And let's end the for loop. Inside of this for loop, I will define p vector that will store the values of the phase, and it should be i entry is equal to p of everything comma everything comma i. The same thing we do for the magnitude. We do we do m vector for the magnitude vector of i is actually the magnitude everything comma everything comma i and that's it okay let's run this and let's see the results now let's see pv here it is and let's see mv here it is perfect now we can do this we can define a new figure I'll call it as figure two, and then we can plot frequency and the extracted PV. This graph will show the phase as a function of frequency. Let's do that. Here it is. Now, you cannot see here very well, so I need to zoom in over here, and you can see what's happening. This is because initially the phase will immediately go to this value. Okay, now over here, let's improve this graph by increasing, for example, by basically decreasing the step size, and we don't need to go until 1000 hertz, we can, for example, go until only 10 hertz, and let's repeat this. And we should get a more clearer graph. And here it is, the graph looks nicer. How about the magnitude? Let's do the same thing, let's define figure three and let's plot frequency and over here let's type m v and let's run everything together and we can see the magnitude as the function of frequency and finally we can generate one final graph that will plot on the horizontal axis phase and on the vertical axis axis magnitude so let's do that. Plot PV comma MV and let's see the result. And finally, this last graph shows the magnitude as the function of phase. Okay, that's all for today.